Okay, this video is about, you know, how important is nitric oxide and the nitrite um, conversion absorption pathway uh, in the mouth and the stomach. So nitric oxide is the most important vasodilator in the human body, meaning that it opens up arteries. And there's two ways to produce nitric oxide. First of all, it's made by the endothelial cells with the enzyme ENOS, endothelial nitric oxide synthase. Um, that's from the conversion of arginine into nitric oxide. Okay, but then the other way that we're most interested in here today is the oral nitrates in plant foods are converted into nitric oxide. And so we're going to go through that pathway right here. First of all, the person eats a leaf of whatever the plant food, and uh, especially leafy greens. And then these little blue dots represent bacteria uh, on the top of the tongue posteriorly there. And the nitrates right here, nitrate N with three oxygens, are converted by these tongue bacteria into nitrite. Oh, I, I made, I screwed up. That should be an I right there, nitrite. It's not nitrate, it's nitrite. And that's NO2, so two oxygens bound to the nitrogen. And then they pass down the esophagus into the stomach, and then the stomach acid converts the uh, nitrite at this point, NO2, into nitric oxide, NO, and that's absorbed into the bloodstream, eventually gets into your arteries and it helps dilate your arteries. So by dilating arteries, you lower uh, blood pressure and you increase tissue perfusion, the amount of oxygen delivered to tissues. Okay, now there's some things that inhibit it. As you can imagine, these bacteria on the top of your tongue, they don't like mouthwash. So mouthwash will kill these bacteria and they won't be able to convert the nitrites, NO3, into NO2, nitrites. Um, F minus toothpaste will do the same thing. Potentially, F minus water will have a harmful effect on those bacteria. Potentially, antibiotics can have a harmful effect on those bacteria. So all of those things are detrimental to this conversion of nitrate into nitrite, NO3 into NO2. Okay, then in the stomach, anything that blocks gastric acid um, production is also going to decrease the ability to convert nitrite, NO2, into nitric oxide, NO. Um, so the PPI stands for proton pump inhibitors. Those are the things that end in ozol, you know, azol, whatever, that group of drugs. Those are especially bad because they also increase something inside the body called ADMA, which is going to inhibit endothelial nitric oxide synthase. So you're double screwing yourself. Not only are you losing the dietary component of nitric oxide supplied to your body, you're also diminishing the endothelial nitric oxide synthase component. So that can lead to a significant increase in blood pressure. Uh, could cause hypertension. In addition, antiacids and acids will also decrease stomach acidity and thus decrease the stomach's ability to convert the nitrite into the ni nitric oxide. So when you don't have nitric oxide, you're more prone to getting hypertension. It can be surprisingly significant hypertension. Another problem is this enos over here, endothelial nitric oxide synthase. That's going to be diminished with aging. You know, in the ballpark, when a person goes from being a teenager, let's say, to being 50 years old, an average American person, standard American diet eater, which is a very lousy diet, they're going to be diminished in their nitric oxide synthase production by about 50%. Now, if they're eating a healthy diet and they're exercising, I doubt it's that much. I don't know the exact amounts, but a lot of times when you see this is what happens to the average American, that's based on them being a typical you know, fat, meat-eating, sad diet eating person. A lot of times if a person is living in a much healthier way. They don't diminish. And why am I so confident in saying that? Because we know if you go to these uh, populations like the Yanomamo and you know the Amazon jungle and stuff, they got the same blood pressure as a teenager. They have the same blood pressure in their 70s and 80s, okay? Same thing with other endemic plant-based populations. So I don't buy this stuff, even though I know it might be in some American Journal article that you have 50% drop in nitric oxide production by the endothelium by ages in the 40s or 50s. I still doubt that that's true in a population that's eating a healthy plant-based diet all along. Again, because their blood pressure stay the same from when they're born all the way up to teenager, up to their 70s and 80s. So I think you got to be careful. Because also, I look at tons of brains, okay? And I can tell you, you show me a brain of a healthy person who eats and lives well, their brain's going to look great, okay? It's going to look 30, 40 years younger than somebody who's eating all this high-fat diet, smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol.
All right, so nitric oxide, why is absorption such a big deal? We talked about it being a vasodilator, meaning that it opens up arteries so you can get more blood flow going through there. And that makes a big difference. The equation for arterial blood flow is like over R to the fourth, radius to the fourth. Um, so it's, um, it's a big increase in flow uh, for a small increase in diameter. Uh, nitric oxide also inhibits platelet aggregation, so it helps prevent platelets from clotting. Remember how we talked about that being a big deal? It also helps prevent those platelets from being activated and glomming around metastasizing cancer cells. So this would be very beneficial. You get increased oxygen delivery to your tissues and you get less platelets uh, activated sticking around your uh, potentially metastasizing cells. So your immune system gets a clear uh, grab on them and can remove those cancer cells. Um, it'll lower blood pressure towards a more optimal level. It also protects the stump. Stomach helps prevent, uh, helps heal gastric ulcers, and it decreases the amount of Helicobacter pylori. So basically, your stomach's immune system's functioning better, can heal better, and it can prevent infection better. Um, it inhibits hypertension, like I said. It lowers blood pressure. It has a, it counteracts a little bit of the angiotensin II effect. I saw papers to that extent. Improves wound healing. Improves exercise performance. Improves erectile function. You know the. Magic medicine, that's what it does in the Johnson, is it elevates uh, nitric oxide. Okay, endothelial nitric oxide, we talked about the aging and how that's probably exaggerated if you're living a healthy lifestyle. Lots of American men are impotent. Western, Western men eat sad diet, so they have about half of them are impotent in their 50s. Okay, this guy, Nathan Bryan, PhD, he's sort of like one of the world experts on nitric oxide. And what he basically says is Americans, persons who eat a sad diet, they got a serious dietary deficiency in nitrates. Well, that's because the nitrates come from plants and Americans don't eat enough plants. But that's a fixable problem. Just start eating more plants. And you can only take in so many calories, so don't take in, don't eat anything that's bad for you. No meat, no processed food, none of that junk, and you'll have more stomach space to put in more leafy greens. The other thing, too, is when you think about it, you know, a lot of times everything bad goes with bad, everything good goes with good. And so what I mean by that is when you eat more plants, what's in the center of a molecule chlorophyll? It's magnesium. Magnesium is also a vasodilator. So that's going to also help improve your blood pressure. And what does P for plants remind us of in terms of ions and, and food? P for potassium, okay? And so P for potassium, K plus is kalium, the Latin for uh, potassium. So the point is when you eat plant foods, you're going to get lots more lots more potassium, lots more potassium. So that's also going to improve your blood pressure. In addition, plant foods tend to be low in fat as long as you're avoiding the high fat plant foods, which I recommend that you do. Because you're low in fat, you're going to have less insulin resistance. Because you have less insulin resistance, that's also because there's complications of diabetes. Diabetes is associated with increased oxidative stress, increased advanced glycation end products, increased hyperglycemia. All of those things will lead to inhibition of enos, endothelial nitric oxide synthase. So what I'm saying is diabetes causes high blood pressure. You almost always see them together. The same patient who's diabetic is hypertension. And eventually, a hypertensive patient will probably become diabetic. You know, you can certainly be hypertensive without being diabetic, but usually the diabetics are hypertensive, and hypertensives usually eventually become diabetic. So what am I saying? You win in every way when you eat a low-fat plant-based diet. Because you're low in fat and you're also low in animal protein, you avoid insulin resistance, and you don't get oxidative stress, AGEs, hyperglycemia, which would thus decrease your nitric oxide, okay? Because you're eating a lot of uh, plant foods, hopefully some significant amount of greens there, you're also going to get more nitrates that get converted in your mouth to nitrites, get converted in your stomach to nitric oxide. So you're going to get that benefit. You're also going to get more potassium. You're going to get more uh, magnesium. So you get everything you want to make your blood vessels uh, function optimally. And you avoid the fat. You avoid, also you want to avoid the sodium. Sodium inhibits endothelial nitric oxide. And you want to avoid um, all that stuff that's harmful to you. And then you want to exercise. Just make sure you're walking a lot every day. Try to keep busy. Just simple stuff. When you're at home, go to the bathroom that's farthest away from you. Okay? You know, whenever you take a little study break or break from whatever else you're doing, jump on a stationary bike or a treadmill or something. Get a few extra steps. Just do little things like that to constantly get a little more exercise out of the day. Get a standing desk, treadmill desk, whatever, and you'll get more and more exercise. Um, side effects of nitric oxide deficiency, you know, of course, hypertension. And it could be a lot of hypertension. And, of course, all the stuff that it leads to. Hypertension is like the main risk factor for atherosclerosis. And then, you know, the Johnson arteries are about 1.5 millimeter in the pudendal, so they're prone to impotence. 
Then the coronaries, you know, they're about three millimeters diameter approximately, so you're prone to coronary artery disease, cardiac angina, myocardial infarction. The carotid's going out to the brain, the internal carotid artery. It's in the ballpark of six millimeters, often a little bit less than that, but let's say in the ballpark of six millimeters in diameter. So I like that ratio. Carotid's six, coronaries three, Johnson pudendal arteries, 1.5 millimeters. So you don't want to be accumulating atherosclerosis in those areas. Um, you'll eventually put yourself at risk for vascular dementia and all that stuff. Talked about all that stuff in separate lectures. Also, a deficiency in nitric oxide is associated with uh, decreased immune system function. You don't want that. We talked about how theoretically it would be associated with increased risk of metastatic, metastatic cancer, I would think, probably. I don't have a paper to show that, but I'm just saying logically it makes sense. If you're having more platelet activation, that more platelet activation is associated with increased uh, the decreasing the body's immune system's ability to remove those uh, cancer cells shed into the blood. So anyways, uh, you know, same old story. When you eat low-fat, plant-based diet, all the advantages come to your benefit. Uh, other things that inhibit endothelial nitric oxide, we talked about dietary sodium, we talked about an excessive dietary fat. So hope that was helpful.